I'm in episode four here. Episode four. And if we look at our global options, since I'm on a Windows computer, I just wanted to point this out. You go to terminal. You can click on new terminals open with bash. Um, this is this is the one that I'm going to recommend for the course. We're wanting to run on Linux systems, and so we're going to use Linux. Now, if you don't have this, then you need to set up WSL2 and install Ubuntu, which I've shown in a prior video. Now that we're in here, I'm going to go into the Postgres database. And what I need to do is run vim.env. And here I'm just verifying that the, um, the passwords are in there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and run Docker Compose up. Just verify that everything's working. And it is. Great. Okay. All right, so I just had a little hiccup there. For some reason, whenever I ran Control-C, I wasn't able to stop the database, but, but now it's working. Okay, so that's all hooked up. Let's run the database. We can detach. And we're going to add a package to our project. All right, so now we've got all of our database packages. Installing looks like DB plier, DB, everything's loaded. Now you might get an error saying that you don't have those packages. By all means, just go and uh, run your install.packages right on um, our Postgres DB plier and, and whatever else you need. I'm going to create a main.r file. Touch main.r. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load our package here. Okay. What we're going to do first is actually create a connection to our database. The first thing that we need to do is create our .r environ file if we don't have one already, because this is where our passwords are going to go dot r e n b i r o n okay so now we've got it down here i'm going to go to postgres show hidden files I'm going to get this dot m file I'm going to copy and paste it into our dot r environment file now later we'll we'll consolidate all of this but for now this dot m is just the environment file for the docker compose and then we're creating the .r environment file down here so that we can have environment variables for this particular project. So if I were to come in here and I said sys.kidinv postgres user, you're going to see that nothing shows up. But if we restart our session, it's here, right? The DBI package has a DB connect function right here. Oh, DB connect right there. So we're going to use DB connect. And did, uh, did DB connect actually get session restart R but it's weed. Okay. So now we should have DB connect in here. Yep. Okay. And we're going to use from the R Postgres, we're going to use R Postgres package Postgres to actually get the, the driver we need. And it, it is working. Okay. Since we have Docker running, we can actually connect to it from R. And we could do something like um, db create table. 
Okay. And we just pass it our connection. And if you look here, um, you know, we've got arguments. So we'll add the name of our table, MP cars. Okay. And then the fields is MP cars. Now, if we ran DB list tables, we could do PG connection again. And we see that there is a MP cars tables. Another function is DB append table. So now that we actually have our table that's been created, we can do PG connection. And then we're going to do, uh, append data to the MP cars database or um, table. And then we can just give it the, the information here. Okay. So now, if we were to go into data grip, and if we put in our information, I'm going to click refresh here to get the information updated. And then we see here we have our empty cars data. And using the DB create table, function, the, uh, the type was inferred from the data that was passed. Um, but it's, it's not too choosy, right? Because with cylinder, you know, I would assume that you could, you could label this as an integer and save some space, but you're not doing that here, right? So this is the, this is the lazy way to create tables, but we'll actually work on, on creating these tables later. However, I often do this because I'm lazy, right? And here's a cheat code. You can right click MT cars in here. You can go to quick documentation. And then you could copy paste this create table. And and we could we could actually start to to update this, right? So we could just come in here and, and rename the uh the types. And then we could add a, a special unique key or identifier or, or add some constraints. Um, so, so I often do that because it's, it's nice to be lazy and right clicking and, and doing this quick documentation is, is pretty great because you can, you know, get a quick look at your data and, um, and I, I just, I just like that. Okay. So we've connected to our database. We've created a table. We've looked at those tables and then we've updated some data in our database. Now, We'll get more sophisticated as time goes on, but for a quick project, um, you know, this is kind of nice. Now, there's, um, there's a little bit more. So I want to create a database connection. And we're going to look at schema public. And then empty cars. And I'm going to call this empty cars connection. And what we have here is a, a SQL query that we're going to start building. So if I did show query here and I said empty cars connection, you'd see that what this actually is, is a way of interacting with dplyr to the database backend. So every time I, I run this, it's actually returning a, the, the top of the, the query that we're sending. So if I did this, um, mutate carb is equal to carb times two. Then you'll see that we've, we've actually duplicated carb. But what this is, again, is is a query that's being dynamically generated from our dplyr code. And this might not mean anything to you yet, but that's totally fine. We're going to continue to go through those types of functions whenever we, we need to and we get to them. So I'm just showing this for people who are already familiar with dplyr, how you can create this database connection and write SQL code with your uh, dplyr code and I can prove it to you that it's going to work because I can say 
can run this inside of data grid. And boom, we get the same stuff back, right? And we get the, uh, the carb eight instead of four. So that's the uh, quick introduction to getting our database set up, getting some connection set up. And as we go on, we're going to start to add these types of functions to our package instead of keeping them in our main folder or the main file. The main file is not necessarily a practice that everyone does, or I don't know who, who, who does this with R, but I like to have one file called main.r where I'm basically using this as a scratch pad to move things over into my R, R folder. And, and you'll see how I do this as time goes on. Um, so for now, we're going to call it good, and I will talk to you soon.